Hi, this is a foreigner in the Philippines. Well, you can see I got my glasses on today because I, <laughs> I don't seem I don't see too well on the on the reading. I just want to uh, address one thing very quickly because I don't want to spend a lot of time on bottom feeders, right? Which we be, we're not exactly having a problem with, but it has to be attended to because for me um, it's a it's a well-known thing that a hundred people can pat you on the back and tell you you're wonderful and one bottom feeder comes in and makes a threat or does something nasty and for some reason it's like you're well if you're a carpenter and you're working on the tools you know your entire body is completely healthy and then you get one one little splinter in the end of your finger and every time you put your hand into your jeans to get a tape measure or a pencil, that little thing hurts. So, so why, do, why do we deal with that? For that very reason. These people are making life unpleasant. And so we try to deal with it. Right, now, blocking is one thing, but we can't get there. We can't get online in order to be able to block these things quickly enough and and the poison sits there on our channel. Now, if you've been following us, you know that I maintain that this is a feel-good channel. That you can go anywhere, anywhere and look at television, listen to radio, you can go online, you can go to any of these sites by expats and it seems to me expats all mainly 50% it will be will be complaining about life here and we're not we're not into that right so the bad news is all there if you want it so i want a place where you can come and actually enjoy being there and when you leave you feel better some the most wonderful compliment I've had very recently, among all of the God bless compliments and wishes, is I feel better when I leave your side. That's what we're interested in. So the bottom feeders, they're a splinter. I remember, just to uh, change my language for a little while, I, I remember graffiti from a book on graffiti from Vietnam. And one American soldier had written, as I slide down the banister of life, I will remember Vietnam as a splinter up my ass. That kind of sums it up. They're a splinter in the end of the finger. And so that's how much we need to deal with them. But if they make a threat which appears to be based in law, then we're going to attend to it and treat that as information which might help us to stay out of trouble. Right, now... What I really wanted to talk about is that there's something happening here which you may not be aware of it, because it's just, it's just flying by you. In our little site, just in a few months, we've, we've gotten, uh, it must be approaching somewhere between three and three and a half thousand subscriptions, but we're around a million views and I think that this is because it's a feel-good site and it deals with good news. But I also feel that because we're not complaining about real life in the Philippines, we're, we're actually glorifying the human spirit. And that spirit is something that is just inherent in the Filipino way of looking at things. And for all those people who flee here from their own country it's not just about money it's it's very simple to say i can live better here i can live like a king here on my money that i can't afford to live on in my own country it's not just about that it's about coming into a place where the people have learned to be happy with very little now obviously a western approach to that will be well that's because they enjoy their poverty their poverty or their slavery or uh, they're, they're too stupid to to get a better life <laughs> it's not about that it's not about that at all we're not talking here and giving you white beaches we're not flying
We're not showing you vacation Philippines. We're showing you ordinary people and ordinary life. Now, for those who are interested in really living here, that's an important piece of information. For those Filipinos, Filipinas, who are working away, this is your connection to home. That's what we're trying to bring you. Now, listen to the list. That's why I've got my glasses on. It took a long time to get there, but eventually the soul fart does get there. Listen to the list of communications that we get. Messages, notes, get well, doing well, you're doing great, love the videos, messages. Can we help? From these countries all over the world. Germany, Switzerland, China, Russia, Hong Kong, United Kingdom, that's England, Ireland and Wales, all of the USA, all over the USA, Canada, Italy, France, Russia, Philippines, people are contacting us from the Philippines, Scotland, Ireland, all of these places. <coughs> Can you understand what's really happening here? This is all because of one girl, in this particular case, one girl who has had a spinal injury for, what is it, six or seven years without receiving treatment. She's a lovely girl, so that means that she was barely out of her teens when this happened to her and she, could, she couldn't get any help. They export people, they export workers, and these people leave their home and often their families and they travel to a new land a new culture which they often struggle to adapt to where nobody actually understands the kind of life that they lived prior to going to that new place so now that Filipino or Filipina you you I'm talking to you you might be living in luxury now and you're working very hard. If you're Filipino, I know you're working hard. And if you're Filipino, I, s I know that you are sending probably 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of every penny that you earn back to your family in the Philippines, back home. Now, here's something that you can do for us to help us to help people in your homeland who are not as fortunate as you earning money. Now, you don't have to send any money, but there's something that you can do which is vitally important to us. What I'm asking you to do is to share your favorite video of us, of ordinary life in your home. And if you can't share it to someone who is a Westerner, Share it to a Filipino. Say, look at this. You recognize this? This is about home. And how are we presenting this? We're presenting it as a team. Beth and I work as a team. I don't talk as a foreigner with Beth sitting there looking pretty. Beth looked pretty anyway <laughs> without any help from anybody. But she has a voice. That means that you as a Filipino have a voice. You can come here and speak to us and we will show you a part of your home that you're missing. And we'll show you people who could use your help. Now, I see foreigner expat sites and they've got 10, 12, I don't know, 15,000 <laughs> on their subscriber list. What Beth and I want you to try to do for us for Christmas is one special gift. Contact someone that you know and share what you're seeing right now and make it so that we have 10,000 subscribers. Why do we want that? If you think it's for me, you've, you've missed the boat somewhere because Beth and I are still living in a house 
with no doors and windows. We've got three windows out of about 10 or 12. That's our luxury. On the ground floor, you can see behind me, there's a jealousy window that I fitted myself. What you can't see is that <laughs> we don't have any doors. We have a bit of plywood that is, uh, we slide across the front. The other one is blocked up completely. So it's not for us and it's not about not us about. whether we need anything. Tell you the truth, I don't need anything. I can get along with everything that I've got because I've had less than this. This is luxury to me. I have a woman that loves me. I have a family that loves me. I have people who are working to help others. I never had this in America. Believe me, for the life that I've had a lot of good fortune, more fun than a lot of people will ever have in all of their life I've had in just years of my life. I've been a successful musician. I've enjoyed playing. I've played, I played in Buckingham Palace. I played at the Royal Palladium. I played in the Festival Hall. I've been in a band that was flown to the Arab Emirates to play for a, a royal, a, a royal family. So what? I've done recording. I've done live radio. I've, you can find stuff on uh, that I've done on this channel. You can find what I sing like. What, what do I? Well, what does he sing like? Probably sounds like an old crow. Well, maybe I do, and you can judge for yourself because there are videos which show that. Videos which show that. Uh, I was a fairly accomplished instrumentalist, a trombone player, and you can look at those as well, and you can judge for yourself whether what I'm saying is true. What I'm trying to say is, I've had all of that. I've had a five-bedroom house in London. I've, I've done up various houses. I've flown, I've gone everywhere in the world. I've flown to almost all of the world. I've, I've been in China, I've been in Australia, I've been all over America, I've been all over Europe. So what? And that's how I think of it. So what? Right now, in the last two years of being married, two to three years of being married to my wife, a Filipina, has brought me more fulfillment than my entire life. So, do I need anything? <laughs> Sure, I could do with this or that. I could do with I could do with some shaving cream, <laughs> but I don't need that. We don't have running water inside the house. I share on a concrete pad stone just outside the door. So what? We're talking about people who need real help, and if you help us just by getting us. Our initial, I want 100,000 subscribers. If you can help us to get, say, 10,000 subscribers, think what we can do to help. We did all that we've done. We've helped five families, five homes. We built four houses. One, two, three. We built four houses. We've reconditioned one other house of, of, of Manorado. We've helped him to finish his house, put cladding on it, get a well, get a, a pump up from the well, and made his life easier. We're looking at building a well for Lena. We're looking at building a well for Nisa, the girl with the spinal problem. We're looking at all of those things, and we did all of that with your help from just 3,000 people who have listened, watched our story, been touched, and they have made it possible for us to do what we've done. Look, I never knocked a nail in. I never dig a hole. I never cut a piece of wood. I never put a roof on any of these houses. I never did anything else. I didn't do anything on this. I just motivated other people to see what they can do to help. People, people have sent as little as one lady sent ten dollars. Can you please make sure that this person gets some rice? <laughs> that was help. 
I'm not asking for money. I don't need any money. Somebody accused me of, well, he admitted that he's, li he's living on less than a thousand dollars. We're doing pretty okay on a thousand dollars. And and if someone sends a gift to Beth and I of fifty dollars, we say thank God for that. Before we started all of this, did we ever go hungry? Yeah, I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to to eat rice and soya. I bet there's not one single Filipino watching this now, and I'm talking to you. Have you experienced that? Have you lived just on rice, rice and coffee? We know where we're going on this. It can be big. It can help so many people. And that's what we're looking at. Bottom feeders go to hell. But we are also attending today. We're going to go and we're going to see about getting a permit which makes this right. We also were contacted today by someone who runs uh, a heart, uh, a heart for the Philippines. I, f I should, I should have written it down. I didn't. This man said, I, "I'm contacting you because it seems like we're doing the same work." This, this is a, a foundation who get medication to people who can't afford it, to to help people who have got sick children who just can't afford to do anything. This morning we are going to take one of the three little girls who has an infection on her leg and it's just been growing and we're going to take her in and get some help for her wow aren't we generous how much will it cost maybe cost a few dollars <laughs> well it's not us it has to be done and this man contacted us and he's already done what i think that we should do now and that is i believe that what we're doing is worthwhile I believe that you can help us to do this worthwhile thing. And that's what we're trying to appeal to you. First and foremost, you don't have to send a single penny. Just help us to grow our site. We don't need anything from it. We've, we are monetized on our site. I, I like to keep everything so that you can never be busted for knowing the truth. You can never be busted for telling the truth. If you're going to be busted when you tell the truth, it's right there and then. And we always tell you what we've taken in and what we've spent. It's all there for you to find out. And I'm sorry that this is probably too long a video uh, for you to sit through. But it's important. All of these countries, all of these people, you will know, if you're in a country that I've just read out, you'll know that what I'm saying is the truth. And you've helped just by that one communication, one person from Russia saying, I saw your video and thank you. It's a huge help because it tells us that we're doing the right thing. At first, when we first came on and started doing this, I actually looked at Beth and I said, well, I wonder who, who on earth is going to be interested in our ordinary life? <laughs> we're just getting up in the morning, or tending to the chickens or the turkeys, and we're making too much noise for most people who are listening to this video. Uh, and we're just doing ordinary things. Who will be interested? But people were. And then we went out and we showed other ordinary people living an ordinary life. Struggles that are familiar to whoever is watching this. People who say, I did that. That's my childhood. I'm watching my childhood. So, help us to expand. Because if we did this on just 3,000 subscribers in something like three months, imagine what we can do with 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 subscribers who are all listening, who are all unfortunately being advertised to, but that can help us get the word out about how easy it would be to help someone with 
a broken back, with a sick child, with all of these things, a roof that pours in. Can you imagine three, the three little girls were living in a room, all in the same room, it was actually four little girls, were living in a room that when the torrential rain started pouring down, the mother would wake them and say, better come to a dry corner. When you're putting your child to sleep tonight and you're putting on his lovely pyjamas, think about that. It's, it's important that you realise you can help. That's the point. And our, our videos have grown to be a place where you can come and help and not just give and it disappears into an endless ocean of huge bureaucracy you can actually see what you did if i say three little girls you're going to see those three little girls if i say someone with a broken back you're going to see someone and then you're going to see how we help them somebody sent fifty dollars and said please could you buy those three little girls a dress and if you want to see what happened to that money, go and look at the three little girls by buying a dress. They went to our Taurus, they chose a dress. Actually, it turned out to be seven little girls in the end. Go and watch that fun video and see seven little girls buying a new dress. A well-meaning subscriber said, but this is Charlie. Charlie, no offence, but you're not in contact with ordinary kids. Charlie, it's not cheap to buy clothes if you haven't got any money. And so me suggesting that at the very least someone out there could go around at a yard sale and get a ton of stuff, children's clothes, bed sheets, adults clothes, and stick them in a bike buy and box and send them out here I'll make sure that they get on the back of a child because when I was round at the three little girls house I was sitting there waiting to make our work in progress video of the house being built and I'm looking at the one of the little girls my mother would have looked at that little girl running round in those ragged pants and she said she would have said oh my god that kid's got no ass in her trousers so yeah clothes are really cheap all you need is money okay enough waffling from me okay I hope you, you'll share this help us to help the people that need it not me I don't need it I already told you I had a big house in London I had a Rolls Royce I had a Bentley I don't need those things anymore I don't need to be singing for the Queen of England or Prince Charlie or an Arab Prince and I don't need to be on radio and I don't need to be on television I had my little bit of fame I had a lot of success, a lot of fun, the best years of a, a lot of lovely women. And I have a woman I love now, and I'm happy, and I'm fulfilled, and I'm going to try to change things for a lot of people that probably can't help themselves right now. Enough. Talk to you soon. Hope you will see us again, and do your best to help. This is a foreigner in the Philippines. Filipino by nature, foreigner by birth.